up YouTube, Tyler from Yugo Bros here with Jared, and we're here to talk about uh, the ARG event that went on yesterday, uh, the Gold Sark Tournament. Um, for you that didn't know, the ARG Open for Worcester, uh, Massachusetts was held this Saturday, which was pretty good. They did nine rounds of Swiss, they did top 16, they went into the next day, which is Sunday. They also did side events and the Gold Sark Tournament. The Gold Sark Tournament was for the... Shonen Jump one of them, right? Yeah, the Shonen Jump eight hundred dollar uh, retail uh, prize card. The um, the Gold Sark, yeah, everyone knows about it. There's also for the Des Voskoffs, um the second place person got a flight to the next ARG event. They used to give out a box of like Shadow Specters and two Joey's Worlds, so it was lots of good prize. Pretty good, there. yeah. And it's like a large local size, so it was like not large local size, like a, yeah, I'd say large, actually large local size. It's about I think about seventy. Yeah, 75 people. 75 people up. probably entered, so... Yeah, six rounds of Swiss, so it was pretty good. Um, a friend of mine, Matt Herrera, actually won. Oh, we have the deck profile up, so give that a uh, like, a uh, comment. Just look it up. It's pretty good. Matt Herrera is a 16-year-old kid. He's a really good player. Um, he's been playing for a while now, but uh, starting recently to get his... Get, up there in uh, popularity, like he top-aided a regional back in Gearja format. Uh... It was well known for that for a little while, but uh, the, we're talking about today an incident that happened at the end of the event. Um, Matt Herrera played uh, two really good players, uh, Billy Brake and Desmond the Car Curry King. Um, he's in the finals against Desmond, and uh, Desmond offers him a scenario where they played out for the prize card, but they mark it off as a draw, so that way. Patrick Hoban has better, or the ARG players, or Patrick Hoban has a better um, chance of placing higher, yeah, or whatever. Chance, chance of playing higher, higher, so you can get better prizes or get the flight. So uh, Matt says, "No, I want to win. I want to be known as the. I want to be number one. I don't want to go uh, five oh one. I want to go six oh. And he's like, in Desmond perspective, that he's like, "Yeah, I respect that. Uh, good luck." They shook hands. They played the game out. Matt ended up 2 0 uh Desmond. Uh, he didn't side against the uh, Dragoonia Rulers. He played regular Rulers. Um, and uh, Desmond was alright with that. The problem occurred afterwards when uh, Billy Briggs says to Matt Herrera, I don't know why you couldn't just mark the draw. You're making things more difficult. And Pat Hoven picked up from that saying, The kid's fucking retarded. Uh, first of all, Matt Herrera is 16 years old. Patrick Hoban, I don't know exactly how old he is, but he's too damn old to be starting shit with the little kid. Um, before this event, I was talking to Patrick Hoban, asking his advice, because I also played Dragonia Rulers. I was, he seemed like a pretty nice guy, but I also lost a lot of respect for him in that aspect. Um, when my friend Tony, also friends with Matt, heard that, he confronted Pat Hoban about it. He's like, who are you to talk shit to a 16-year-old kid? He's like, Patrick Hoban said again. He's fucking retarded. He would have also got the gold star again, but if he just marked draw. And we explained to Patrick Hoven that it wasn't about the gold star at that point. He wanted to win the tournament. He wanted to say he went 6-0, beating both Desmond and Billy Brake. And the people around were saying that he respected that. But then uh, it got escalated. My friend Tony got really angry. And he said to uh, Patrick Hoven, uh, one second, um... You play Yu-Gi-Oh all. We, we all you do is play Yu-Gi-Oh with your life because you get no pussy. Um, and who are you talk shit to a sixteen-year-old kid? And that's when people like went crazy. Like people like laughed and like I walked away because I couldn't like keep a straight face. Um, but we're gonna bring that up to tell you like there's been videos before saying how much of a bitch Patrick Hoban is um, with Courtney Waller. I saw a video where Patrick Hoban. Um, Try to rule shark. Someone with Stardust. The guy goes dark. He goes dark hole. Guy puts tap Stardust and then puts it in the graveyard to show that he's activating it. And then he brings it back in the end phase. And Patrick's like, "Oh, you didn't say tribute, so you don't get the effect." And the judge kind of screwed him over on that. Screwed over the other guy on that. Um, but I just thought that was really like poor sportsmanship on Patrick Hoven's part. Like he's been topping these ARG events. He's earned numerous amounts of uh, credit from that. I think he got to go to YCS Italy because of that, because of his first top there. And I feel like if you could win like a champion and be happy for someone else, like he was happy for Desmond and stuff, that you can lose like a champion as well. Like, it's sportsmanship. This is Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not the end-all, be-all. Like, you should have some more respect for yourself than that. Yeah. 
where I was standing was at the last round when Matt went 5-0 with the Dragon Rulers. He, I was behind Desmond and I was watching. And at first they were talking about it and they came, they were, Desmond was, on the outside he showed that he was like, alright, I respect it. But on the inside you could tell that he really, he did not want to, you know, chance not getting second. I mean, going 5-0 and then not being able to get the top, you know, four main prizes is kind of, it's shitty. Yeah, and but, it went Matt Herrera, Desmond, and the next one was Billy Brake versus his opponent. Some random kid. Some, they, another they dragon. Playing, it was a dragon mirror. They ended up shuffling their side decks into their main deck and signing out 15 random cards. So they obviously didn't give a fuck at that point. And then there was Patrick Coburn right next to him and someone else, and then it had some other people. Uh, Billy Brake seemed to put in his input due to the fact that, obviously, Desmond being friends with the ARG members... Uh, he just didn't understand why. I mean, I'm sure if Desmond would have won, they would have been. They wouldn't have said a thing. Yes. But because Matt was the upset and got into it, he to he two owed him. I mean, he played it Matt, out. Yeah, he won. He wanted the six zero. Yeah, Matt two owed uh, Billy Brake earlier in the match, and um, from what I witnessed, I'm not saying this is fact. I thought Billy Brake was stalling in time. There was two minutes and thirty seconds left on the clock. Billy Brake had already attacked, and Matt was at thirty nine hundred to Billy's seventeen. Uh, Matt, uh, Billy Brick had returned set, so he tried to do Ancient Fairy Dragon plays after thinking, and it just seemed to me that he's happened to make a play that makes him gain life points after he's been sitting down for, like, five minutes trying to deck Matt out under Max C when Matt has 18 cards left in deck. Obviously, like, at that point, I would have scooped, said, good game, uh, you win, but he was just trying to squeak it out, and he's been thinking, he's, like, as soon as, like, the minute clock, as soon as it hit a minute, that's when he started making plays more quickly. Like, he sat there for, like, a minute and a half, just counting, thinking. And then he was like, okay, special summon, special summon, special summon, flip return, and all that. Like, if you flip, like, I thought that was kind of bullshit. But it ended up not making, even mattering. Uh, Matt was very gracious. He didn't, like, brag about it. Um, he was just happy he went 6-0. Yeah. He's happy he, yeah, he's happy he won it. He's a kid, like... The kids like really ecstatic about it. Like that's great. That's what the game should be about. It shouldn't be like, oh, a couple of grown ass men win the same shit every time. It's like, this guy won playing this deck. Like, granted, it was a dragon thing, but it's a sixteen year old kid winning, beating some of the best kids on the players in the game. He put in work and he deserved to win it. So the fact that not an ARG won it is what got it all butter. And as soon as Pat Hoban, it was like, it was tolerable. Like they were, you know, bickering about it after. And then as soon as Pat Hoban was like, for some reason he stopped playing his game yeah, he, and he, put in his own input when no one asked him, and there was really no need to do it, but he still decided to turn over and say that the decision and that and that he was retarded for not taking the gold star. He wouldn't just take the 5 and one like all the other ARG players did. Because in the main event, it seems yeah. like every single person that went X1, a very happened. good my, uh, Everyone like X1. portion of them all drew. No, all of them who were X1 decided to draw, to go, uh, so they were like... Or they were, if they were X1 or they were uh, undefeated, they decided to draw so that way they guaranteed to make it into the top cut. So the top 16 players, the top 16 tables were empty in the event while the other people played out to try to make it in there. Not knowing this, people weren't guaranteed, like even X2s that might be able to squeeze in, try to get a top, like top or two maybe, they were denied because of that. Which is like, congratulations, you went. The full thing, but I feel like you shouldn't be able to intentionally draw. Like, Konami made a, a rule against it, mm. but ARG obviously didn't, which uh, ended up to screw a lot of players out of the top cut. But it's uh, it's what happened. Like, I'm not salty about it. Um, I didn't do as well as I thought I would be doing at the ARG event. Um, but I was, every time I lost, I was really gracious about it. I was like, good game, man. Good luck today. Or every time I won, I was like, good game, good luck today. I wasn't uh, partial either way. Mm. I think you should. Like I think you should just be able to win and lose like a champion. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, like the event was good. We had some. We had some good. There was a lot of great players there, and uh, yes, the team really showed that they. There was some great plays that they did. Uh, obviously, not everyone did as well, but um, there was there was a lot of crazy decks around that we didn't like. My first round, I played a chaos, a soul mode, void order, like void void ogre spam, and that was too much. I won game three off of just sitting on double T-Roar until I can drew into a another 7 so I can big eye their Stardust, or big eye their Void Ogre, Tech Ogre, Stardust to hole to just shenanigans. But, like, there's just, it was a lot of random stuff, so, I mean, the deck was, it was a good, it was an overall good day. 
Penguin soldiered five people for some big rounds. Spellbooks were huge at the event. Like, I'm a huge spellbook fan. I just can't play the deck. It's not my play style, unfortunately. I was playing it before. Um, this was an event for spellbooks, honestly. There was so much Kinsella. There was so much <coughs> Evil Swarm. There was so yeah. much Fire Fist. Uh, oh, dragons were huge still, but, like, spellbooks, this was an event for them to do well, and you saw that in the top cut. There was at least, I think, three spellbooks in the top cut, which were more than they have ever been this, uh, this, uh, what's it called? This uh, format, which is great. Um, they're playing the new Justice build where they play Triple Justice, Triple Kaiku, Triple Magician, and I think either two to three High Priestess, which I don't personally like myself. I like the Temperance build because I always, I want to constantly have a spellbook on, spellcaster on board for fate and everything, but it, they did what they had to do. Uh, I want to wish, I want to say congratulations to everyone who topped the event. Um, I just want to say, like, win like a champion, lose like a champion. Uh, you don't got to be a bitch about it, man. It's like, it's unbecoming. You're a grown ass man making fun of a little kid. Like, why you do this? Yeah, it was very surprising seeing him do it out in the open. And uh, I think a lot of other people uh, kind of looked at him differently. Like, I've never had a problem with him. I just look at him as an ARG player. That's um, I've seen him play. You know, he's a good player, but to be like that type of an attitude, especially in a place where you're supposed to be representing, you don't want to. Yeah, you don't do his, that. That's, that's like his, his home. Event. You know, that's he's an ARG player. He's the number one ARG player. Like. uh... Other YouTubers in there looking at him like he was crazy. Like, it wasn't just us. Like, I thought at point, like, maybe we were going from a different... Maybe we were taking it too personally. But I looked at everyone, and they were looking at Pat Hoban like, dude, the kid's 16. That's not, like, that big of a deal. You lost... You didn't top eight your tournament. You did win the tournament for once. Just get over it, you know? So that's it. So like, comment, subscribe, share a video, and talk about Pat Hoban.